this video, I would like to show you how you can cut a correctly sized stopper hole for a uh, manufactured rubber stopper and how to get it to fit every time um, and uh, you know not stick out and have the, the shaker rock on it. Um, stoppers come in different sizes. This small one that I have that goes in the shaker, this is a size 3. The ones that I'm going to use to cut today these are size 4. You can buy stoppers in a lot of different places. Two great online sources are Axner Pottery and Aftosa. They sell um, pieces of things that you might need. They, they sell little, I don't know what you call it, like hardware pieces for things. So I have uh, two stoppers for number fours to and show you this. I, so this one I've taken a magic marker and I've uh, kind of traced a red line around this. The way that these are made is this has an outer flange. So you can see it has an indentation. This is the outside of the stopper. And this, this part goes on the interior. And then this is the diameter that I would like to cut the clay today. So eventually the clay will shrink to be this smaller diameter. So this should be about the thickness of your clay wall. Your clay wall will actually be right here. Now this is a very difficult, if not impossible, diameter to trace. So what I typically do is I will put it on the outer flange, but yet the outer flange, you have to pay attention, is actually a little bit wider than that inner flange that has the red line on it. So I trace it first with the outer flange, but I'm not going to actually cut it all the way to that. You can use a fettling knife, or in this case, I just grabbed a an X-Acto knife because I had it on hand. Okay, if your clay is a little harder, an X-Acto might be really important. So it's very important that you you start the hole in the middle and basically whittle until you get to the correct size. Um, I never actually try to poke the knife in on the line and cut it out on the line. It's very difficult to do it neatly. I usually just tell my students just whittle it until you get it to the size that you need it to be. Okay, now it should really fit freely on the day that you cut it. Like you should put it in and it should just meet the edges of the stopper. You do not want it to be and if those things fall on the inside, you can always shake them out later. You do not want it to be uh, too tight or too loose on the day that you make it. Okay, so right now that is actually a little bit loose. I'm going to kind of push that in a little bit right there. And this is kind of creating a little bit of a recess. There we go. Now, as I push that in, it really just kind of freely fits, not too overly snug, and you can always put a little bit of a bevel if need be. Now, I already have a recessed portion on this shaker, so I don't really have to do that, but this one didn't have a recessed portion, so I had to angle my knife to create a bevel. So the stopper flange, the purpose is, you do not want the stopper flange to be protruding because if it sits on the stopper, it's going to rock. You want the stopper to be up inside there. So this one is correctly sized. Now I'm going to take that out. Please remember to take your stoppers out. <laughs> I have had kids who have left them in on several occasions. Occasionally I have fired them on accident. Makes a little bit of a mess on my kiln shelf, so I try to be careful of that. And let's do this one the same way. So I hold the stopper in place. I trace the outside flange, which we know is a little bit bigger than what we actually want it to be. Oh, and I, I could have mentioned, I forgot to show you, since I'm doing these round shakers that I made in a different video, um, I didn't want to just set them on a, a hard surface, so I have it on a piece of foam. And now when I put the the knife in again I'm going right in the middle of it and the fun thing is sometimes there's so much pressure that you can hear air come out I don't know if you could hear that it's kind of funny though when it does so I whittle it I go from the middle outward and I whittle Double on the edge 
it helps to reduce the thickness of the wall, especially if you did something like a pinch pot for a shaker, it, it, they can be really fat and chubby and thick walled, so you don't want it to be too thick. All right, there we go. So that just freely fits right now. You can see that the stopper itself uh, is up inside, but yet the flange is still sticking out. And just kind of tidy that up with your finger. And that is how you cut correctly sized stopper holes. Now for the actual holes in the, the top of the shaker, I like to use a, a drill bit and this is actually just a Kemper tool. You could use an honest goodness drill bit though, but this uh, Kemper tool is like a little drill bit. It's a salt and pepper drill. One end's a little bit fatter than the other. Um, I will often um, have a difference between my shakers with the color or the size. So in the case of these, one is obviously bigger than the other. It doesn't really matter, so I could actually have my holes the same. So I'm doing, it looks like seven holes. I'm doing one surrounded by six. There's really no right or wrong way. And then I'm just going to tidy that back up again. You always want to make sure that these holes are completely cleaned out. If you have little chunks in there, it could interfere with the functionality of it. Okay. And this is a, a, a superior method of putting the holes in rather than a needle tool because a needle tool is just shoving the clay aside. This is actually cutting through the clay. It's kind of removing some clay, so it is a little bit better. Okay. When that dries a little bit more, I'll clean up those holes a little bit more where I have some of those ridges there but I'd like to get it a little bit drier. And all of this was done, by the way, when this was leather hard. Um, I don't put the holes for the stoppers in until it's leather hard, because if you do it when it's plastic, you do have to account for um, a little bit greater shrinking. Oh, and I should mention, this is stoneware clay that I'm doing, but I have found that stoneware and earthenware still will work with the uh, same uh, diameter for the flange. So, I hope you uh, learned something helpful about uh, stoppers and uh, shaker holes.